So my last video in the L24 engine rebuild series had me with the engine for the first time safely on the ground. And at this point I was really eager to get it up onto the engine stand that I purchased. An L24 should bolt to a standard engine stand at these rear bolts that are used to attach the transmission bell housing to the block. As you can see here, the only thing that's in your way at this point is a little locating dowel that's at the bottom left corner. And to remove it, I just put in some rust penetrant spray, which, to be honest, ended up being useful in a lot of other aspects of this teardown process. Uh, and you lightly compress it with some vice grips and just kind of wiggle it out of there. So as you can see, these holes were filled with all kinds of rust and gunk that needed to be removed. A lot of people make the mistake of using a standard thread tap to clean threads. What you should use instead is called a thread chaser. These are designed to only clean existing threads as opposed to cutting anything new, which is really all you want to do here. You can make your own by cutting a small slot with a Dremel or some other cutting tool uh, that will serve as a reservoir to pick up dirt and grime and whatever it is you're cleaning out uh, of a matching bolt. In this case it's an M10 by one and a half millimeter bolt. Then I took some tweezers and removed the larger pieces of rust and dirt building up inside that hole. And then I used a probably excessive amount of rust penetrant and then standard WD-40, uh, but part of it was to sort of blow some of that stuff out of the hole as well. Next I just took my thread chaser tool and tried to feed it in by hand. Your goal should be to try to feed it in by hand as much as possible. I would say you should only consider taking the wrench out uh, if you followed uh, you know, a certain procedure, which is you know, only small movements with the wrench, and what you're waiting to feel is if there's a little bit of resistance, you have small movements on the wrench to the point where it gets a little bit easier, um, and then it actually becomes light again. And what's happening there would be whatever it is that's blocking your path and the threads gets moved into that middle, you know, cavity that we created in the bolt, and then it's out of the way and it gets, you know, easier to turn again until you encounter the next dirt or whatever it is until you get to the end of the, um, the end of the bolt hole. Um, what you don't want is to get that resistance and it just continually gets harder and harder or it's just consistently hard because that would mean that the the piece of dirt or rock might even be damaging the threads as you just pull it uh, continually through them with, you know, there's not a lot of room left with the, with a bolt inside of a bolt hole. Uh, so just be careful of that and just take your time. So I want to talk briefly about the bolts used to attach the engine to the engine stand. U.S. or imperial size bolts are rated on a grade system. That is, the lower the grade number, the weaker the bolt, and vice versa, the higher the grade number, the stronger the bolt. For something like this where we're mounting an engine to an engine stand, people often recommend using a grade 8 bolt, which is a, some kind of strengthened alloy. I, I don't really know what I'm talking about in terms of metal, but it's a very strong bolt. Now given that the L24 is a Japanese manufactured engine, everything is in terms of metric bolts. Now metric bolts don't necessarily correspond to the American grade-based system for rating the strength of bolts. They're instead rated on a class-based system. That is, the class number of a bolt corresponds to the strength of the bolt. The rough equivalent to a US grade 8 bolt is a metric class 10.9 bolt. Now I spent one of these Sundays all day going from hardware store to hardware store trying to find the correct size, length, and strength metric bolt and had no success. I actually ended up having to order this bolt online uh, through a company called Fastenal and I had to wait for a few days for it to arrive. What you see here is in the meantime I got impatient and wanted to put it up on the engine stand and I also wanted to get this configuration correct. That is the arms of the engine stand need to, to relate to where the bolts are uh, and I wanted to get that setting completely you know as close to perfect as possible because you know it's going to sit up here for a long time. You might as well have it be even. I decided that in the meantime I would let the engine hoist still stay where it's holding the engine up on the stand and use the 8.8 .8 bolts and that should be pretty safe to do do some work. I did some small jobs like remove the oil filter and spark plugs with it uh, up in the air. Because I had kind of a hard time with this, I'm going to start selling this product on my website. So I put in an order for a bunch of these to buy in bulk and if you're watching this in the future and you're looking to do the exact same thing, take a look in the description as I'll have a link to that product included there. With the engine up on the stand, I removed the spark plugs. I decided to keep the spark plugs and have them labeled just in case we want to reference them against maybe some other clues that we find inside this engine. Next I took off the oil filter here uh, and that thing was just a big rusty eyesore so it was pretty nice to have it off the engine. 
Then I removed this bracket and hose here, trying to take care to preserve the old school um, hose clamps because those are pretty hard to find nowadays. Then I took my breaker bar and removed the right side engine mount and the water inlet housing pipe. Then I removed the four bolts that secured the water pump pulley to the water pump, as well as the handful of other bolts that are used to secure the water pump itself to the front cover. Now I'm skipping a little bit ahead here, but when I had the water pump off, I drew a sketch around it uh, of the rough outline to mark where the bolts go and I could put them into this piece of cardboard. Now even though this is pretty tedious, I'm trying to be um, as, as good as I can about making sure I do this whenever possible. Just It's so much more helpful in assembly time to know this is for sure where the bolt came from uh, and this is where it has to go back in. One other important thing here is these two holes that I'm pointing at look like they are you know where bolts were once but were broken off. They're actually studs so you don't have to worry about them. And next I just went around the perimeter of the oil pump around that gasket with a chisel and a hammer and eventually it just came right off. So I have to apologize for locking out the main light source here, but I just used the standard procedure for removing core plugs. Just hammer on the edge of the core plug till it rotates and then you can pull it out with a set of vice grips. I'll link in the description to a YouTube video that does a really good job of explaining this more in depth if you need. So the book that I'm referencing to do a lot of this disassembly mentions that the front and rear facing core plugs on an L-series engine are too close to the cylinders, so much so that you can't apply the standard procedure that we used on the side plugs to remove these front and rear facing core plugs. Instead, they recommend that you drill a small hole and then get a machine screw or a bolt with a larger diameter of that hole, enough to the point where it's able to insert and kind of create its own threads, because again, you can't use a standard thread tap because due to the tapered edge we talked about earlier on in this video, it would get too close to the cylinders before it actually started cutting threads. So that's why you need to use this bolt and hope that it cuts threads. In my case, it didn't. I think it's just because the, the core plugs that I'm working on are just so rusty that even though I was able to get a good kind of thread cut and it was a good grip on that core plug initially, when I started to pull it out, the core plug would warp so much that I would lose that grip and it would just come out and I really didn't even move it at all. I spent way too much time on this before deciding that this really isn't that important right now because I can just remove these a lot easier once I have the engine open up more and can just hammer it out from the inside. Uh, if anyone has any suggestions on how to do this easier for somebody who might not be in that situation, let me know. So next I started removing some of these other brackets on top of the valve cover. Um, I can look back in the manual to see what these are actually called. I know one of them is where the spark plugs are held across the valve cover. Uh, another thing to note here is that I did end up breaking off one of the bolts, removing one of these, um, but I just set that aside as well. Um, just taking two losses one after the other here on this, but that's something I can easily come back to uh, and figure out a way to get that out of there and use a fresh bolt on the reassembly. So next I used a torch and my handy dandy wrench leverage pipe here to get this fitting out. I believe it's the water um, outlet to the heater core. And next I decided to take my first look inside the valve cover, except for one time uh, when I was going to look at the engine, the seller had it open and we got a chance to look inside. And I gotta say I'm pretty happy with how it looks. And um, at the time of recording this, I've already gotten to tear into it a little bit. And uh, I'm still pretty pleased that it's, uh, you know, despite having been sitting in a field for, for so long, this, uh, this engine inside is in really good condition. So ignoring my very poor breaker bar form here, uh, you're supposed to be pushing it away from you to break bolts as opposed to pulling it towards you. Um, I started to remove the alternator bracket here in preparation to remove the oil pump. Then I used the sketch method again to keep track of the oil pump bolts that I was pulling out and then pulled the oil pump straight off. So I'll end this video with what ended up being the highlight of my week, which is when these uh, 10.9 class <laughs> metric bolts arrived from FedEx and uh, I could actually put it up on the stand permanently here. Uh, you can see I'm using the valve cover again, just 
in case it doesn't look like it ended up happening, but I was worried that maybe the chain would be butting up against you know all the machinery inside of the valve cover. So I wanted to protect it from that, so I put the valve cover back on. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is a few days ago. I, I have plenty more videos to make actually from where I'm at with the engine. Um, it's been kind of nice to kind of put my head down after work and really tear into this, uh, and I'm I'm making some very good progress. Uh, but I'm actually at a point now where I have to make the videos before I can start tearing into more stuff because I want to be able to provide this commentary. Um, I know a lot of these things seem in insignificant, but I just hope that there are these you know these little pieces of nuance that I get from doing it that I can pass on to somebody doing this in the future. And um, you know this is probably going a little bit too far, but it is cool to think about this stuff in terms of you know making stuff on the internet is so cool because you know, something that I put out there is going to be there for the rest of my life. You know, who knows how many people are going to watch this video and, and do the same thing and breathe life back into these these wonderful cars. So I'm trying to make sure I, I put as much effort into this and, and really covering all these little minute details. Um, I'm starting to invest more in the equipment. Um, so the next videos will be with this, um, a lot of the you know equipment you saw in this video and the production value of this video. Uh, but I purchased a new phone and some better lighting equipment and some better uh, equipment of, of uh, you know, a better tripod to hold the phone up so I can, can produce better videos, higher quality. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's kind of the goal with these next few videos. So like I said, the next couple would be pretty much the same thing, but keep an eye out for these as I would like to say that the quality would be much better. Um, so thank you if you watched this far. Uh, I hope it was helpful, and please let me know if there's anything that you'd, uh, you'd like to ask in the comments. Or, uh, But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next videos.